You're a bit skinned at the moment. Not like this. Upkeep alone's killing me. This might be your lucky day. Bird to me is the eponymous Mr. McCorber. Oh, don't worry. Things are looking right up, my friend. Things are looking right up. Everything is going to happen. It's going to be for the right reasons. How about 12 bowls? Sailor return. I've got the first batch here. And things can only get worse with Bert. <laughs> Whatever he tries his hand to, it fails. <laughs> When we first see Bert, he's a plumber, along with his son. Barbman. That's an endearing local term for barmy, right? Well, someone who's barman is what it's kind of like. If you notice, well, the is, there's not a lot of plumbing goes on with Bert. Yeah, treat yourself to a now. That first episode where they flood the surgery. Dad, not that one. No. Yeah. Dad, get it now. Dad. This happens Dad. all the time. You don't have this sorted. He's just a nuisance. <laughs> Water damage now. That's a beast all on its own. Right, hold that and shut up! Then we moved into another area which was taking little bird twitches on tours. Have you ever had a chuff, birds? What we have here is a real money spinner. This way for the last tours, we are the best ornithological tour operator in town. Come and see the amazing birds. That didn't last that long, but then there was a break. There was a break where they actually both he and his son became restaurateurs. I am in the hospitality trade. They get themselves out of one situation, but really straight out of the frying pan into the fire. When it comes down to it, there's not much to choose between plumbing and dining. It's all to do with the rumbling in the pipes. <laughs> You've got to chop quicker than that. Here, let me show Dad, you. I have worked in a restaurant before. Dutch and the teacher want the salad. Two salad de la yeah. There was a lot of tummy problems with the food that they were producing. <laughs> oh, it's OK, Doc. Everything's under control. You go back and sit down. There's blood on my plate. Oh, it's this girl. She's not too handy with the old cleaver. Not good, not good. Not any of this is good. I have treated seven cases of nausea this morning, and they all ate here last night. Doc, Doc, keep it down, for God's sake. I see not content with laying low half of port when you've now started on the visitors. If it wasn't for your little performance last night, I'd have locals in by now. I want you to close this restaurant. Come into the kitchen, right? I put everything I've got into this place. I think people love Bert's hat. It's all about the hat. You carry on serving alcohol, you're breaking the law. I think it's his nature to never give up. In every scene, he's trying. I guess in life, whatever you do, you're going to fail at some point. It always comes down to we're large boys and we fail, and they do a quick evaluation and continuing to try and stay afloat. I'm a waiter in a restaurant I used to own. You still own it? 10% is not much to show for a lifetime. You know what, boy? I need more. Dad, we've had this discussion. This was pretty good. I mean, this ran for some time until the bills started coming in. This place seems jinxed, doesn't it? Why is that? No one has ever made a go of it, not in all the time I've lived here. He was desperate to think, what could he do? Return to DIY and return to, without his son, who was now running a bed and breakfast somewhere or with Ruth. Bert and Al are always trying to find the next kind of job, really. Because I think the best, the only way to make any sort of living is to work for yourself. You see it quite a lot, sort of people endeavouring to do different things, run their own businesses, and not always be a success. He hits on this idea to make whiskey. For once, it's a really, really good idea. And Ruth, who tastes it for the first time, thinks it's just fantastic, and she puts money into this business. That is a lot of whiskey. Yes. Yes. You told Ruth that sales had been good. I massage the truth that inspires confidence in the investors. So yet again, we're in trouble. That is it. Final straw writing on the wall. I am done. I'm officially handing over the business to you. The business? Yep. What, you mean the failed B&B and the failed whiskey company? All yours. So <laughs> you're quitting and leaving me to pick up the pieces, not to mention Ruth being out of pocket. We'll talk about this later. When you, boy, are a little less emotional. He was now having to be out on his own, try, trying to make a buck. And then Caitlin sees him sort of sad and alone. Cheer up. It might never happen. Too late, already has. He was terrified of her when he first met her. And she was so suggestive. She was the lady who was doing the napkins for the restaurant. 
and he had a little sort of uh, outing with her, which was was disaster. Whiskey business not working out. Nothing is. I got no job. Back to sleeping in the van. I might as well lie down on the beach and let the tide carry me away. You'd always come work for me if you like. He then worked in the sort of little supermarket she ran, so there was another job there. What about the distillery? I was going to come and talk to you about that. It's just that I've decided that the whiskey business, not for me. Well, you could have consulted with me first. Oh, She's sussed Bert out. She doesn't dislike him, but she just knows that she, he's not to be trusted as a businessman. I intend to pay you back every single penny eventually. It's just that it wasn't my fault with the economic climate. No, Bert. It's you, giving up and letting other people pick up the pieces. You OK? Yeah, I'm going to be this busy. Al is always trying to move on from his father. would like to find his own way. Looks like you could need a hand. Yeah, we'll cook. Thank you. Well, no, there's no need to be like that. But loves his father very much as well, so keeps on falling back Love into... Love yeah. And so, yeah, and it's, yes. a, it's a pattern. The, yes. Their life is a pattern. Now, do you want my help or not? No, thank you. No one will give Bert a job unless Al is in charge of it. In series nine, Al and Bert are working in the pub. You know that fisherman Gus? He's allowed me back in to just help change a few barrels. We're not buying into some boat down, okay? We get discounts on all the fish that come in. This is your idea of a stock take, is it? Listen, I can explain everything. You're paying for a share of the boat with whiskey, even though I told you not to. May I produce for you another beautiful bottle of Large whiskey, Port Wen. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, you damaged this boat and thrown away all my whiskey? It was a police emergency. I can't be in charge of any of the money. I can't be in charge of any of this. I hear there's a position available. What, you want to work it? I do, yes. And I'm desperate. I said, no, no, don't take her on, don't take her on, don't take her on. And he looks at me, and in one go, he says, you're hired. Oh, won't this be great, Bert? The two of us working together side by side again. <laughs> Super. It's a pretty nasty trick to play on Bert. So he's then stuck in the pub with Kate. And they seem to be doing really rather well until the owner of the pub drops a bombshell when he says he's going to sell it. They don't know what to do because, in fact, of course, they haven't got any money themselves. They are desperate to find out um, who's going to buy it. Ian's a, he's a force of nature. He installs himself down here every couple of years, and he's a sort of visitor attraction down here. He is our Burt Large since uh, day one, and Joe, who plays Al, he was our juvenile when we started. He's got three kids now, <laughs> and he lives down here. It's, um, it's, been, yeah, it's been such a journey for us. It has been such an absolute pleasure to work with Joe Absalom. He's the son I always wanted. And you've been doing a great job of making sure that this is a success. I'm proud of you, boy. Right, boy. I'm with the lovers. Thank you, both.